Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 13, and today we're talking about the tuning panel. So this guy right over here. Let's go to a presets, go to eight templates and select init MS Rev 1, increase our sustain and drop our cutoff down somewhere over here. So it's not too harsh of a sound. So the first thing that we're gonna notice is going to be this vibrato right over here. When we increase this, we're gonna expect to hear vibrato, right? Wrong, we have to change this depth mod over here in LFO 1 because this is tied to vibrato. Then we gotta increase the rate here if we wanna go something a little bit faster. And take a look here, this is a triangle vibrato, which is basically the triangle waveform shape in LFO1. We can always change this to sine. Basically just going to show that LFO1 is the driving source for this vibrato here. So let's bring this down here, let's bring this back up, and let's take a look at glide. So when we play different notes, they snap to each other. As we increase this here, they're gonna start sliding to each other, which is pretty easy to understand, right, Portamento? However, we have this Glide 2, and you might think, what the heck is this thing? And it's kind of cool. So this Glide 2 is a bipolar offset to VCO2, which also works on VCO3 and triple VCO. So a quick demonstration to show you kind of how this works. Let's go to dual VCO. And for VCO1 and 2, let's have them both at 8. For the first one, let's select a triangle wave. For the second one, let's select a sine wave. So let's turn this mix over here all the way to the left. So this is what we're going to be hearing with Glide 1. Over here in VCO2, also Glide 1. Right, so we get the basic same type of effect, right? So now once we increase this Glide 2... It has dramatically changed the rate for VCO2. Now, if we go back to VCO1, it's doing the same thing that we did before. Let's go back to VCO2. And it's much longer. Now, this is where the cool part comes in. Once you start mixing these two VCOs, you're gonna get both of those different glide parameters with the different oscillators. So it's kind of cool to mix and match different types of glide parameters there. And you can double click this to go back to normal. And as soon as you deviate from this, so here you can see this is the first one and this is the second one, this long ramp up here. So basically, as the name suggests, glide number two. So let's put this back into the center here. Let's listen to just VCO1 for now. Now we have this range, which is kind of cool. So take a look really over here. So let's increase this glide a little bit more. It's a little bit easier to see this way. So these lines here that are going up and down, that's going to be our glide. That's something that we need to keep an eye on. So watch as we change this range here. Let me change it a little bit quicker. So if you haven't figured out what it does already, so all the way to the right here, these notes are basically connected, right? And as we go further and further to the left, this bend here is gets closer and closer to the target note that you're that is gliding into. So as soon as I hit the note, it skips all this here and then just kind of glides right over here to the top note. And as we go back to default, over here all the way to the right, it's basically even. And then as we go to left and left, a lot of cool effects you can get with this range kind of pretty low. There's a lot of cool patches you can get with that. So I'll leave, for, leave that to you to experiment with. So we'll double click this to go back to default here. Now we have our glide mode. So now we understand what glide is. Now what is this glide mode? So here we have time, right? So basically with time, it's a fixed amount of time for the notes to glide. However, if we go to rate, check this out, go from a low note to a high note. And then let's go to some notes a little bit closer. It really doesn't take that much time. So long story short, the rate, it really depends on the distance of the notes. The longer, the bigger the distance from low notes to high notes or high notes to low notes, then you're gonna have a longer bend time. However, with time, it's gonna be equal all around. Woo! 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 
as opposed to rate. So hopefully that makes sense there. So let's go back to time over here. So now we have fine right over here. So basically we're gonna be tuning in fine tunings right here. So take a listen. So basically you have plus or minus one semitone. Next up here, we have transpose. So basically, if you want to transpose the entire synth up an octave, down an octave, up a fifth, or whatever you really want to do, this is where you want to come to. So you select this here. You have a menu of negative 24 and positive 24. If you scroll down on this very long list over here, you can click this here. You can go all the way up to 24. So a nice way to drop a whole thing down in octaves like this, minus 12. And you got some nice low end right over there. Now we have our pitch bend ranges. So this is going to be pitching the bend up two semitones, and this is going to be pitching the bend or the pitch bend down two semitones. And you can always change the different values here. You can go all the way from zero if you don't want any bend at all. You can go up here to 12 for an octave, then to 24. And then from here, it's kind of interesting because from 24 to 36, it jumps an octave, then 36 to 48, it jumps another octave. And the same thing goes for the up as well. So pretty cool right over there. Next up, we have this micro tuning. So if you have a different type of .tun or .tune file, you can load this up here. You can select this to turn this on. Then you can kind of select from the local stuff what they have in here. And there's a lot of different types of things here. So you have like Albert, Barrack and Roll, whatever that means, Bolin, Pierre. So there's a lot of different versions that have come with this synth here. If you want to change some different things, how the notes sound and all that, feel free to experiment with that if you'd like to. If you've, if you've downloaded some from the internet, this can load that as well. So yeah, I thought I'd mention that before we close this out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the tuning. It's not too complicated, but it's good to know where everything is. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.